as we approach the end of the year, giving thanks to our Heavenly Father for allowing us to see 2021. And as we bring in 2022, we want to say, God, thank you so very much for bringing us through danger, seen and unseen, for keeping us closed in our right minds. God, we want to say thank you for our help. God, we want to say thank you for our families, our daughters, our sons, our sisters, our brothers, our extended family. God, we thank you for the abiding faith church family, God. God, we lost so many this year, Jesus. God, but you held on to us with your grace and your mercy, God, to see us through Jesus this year, God. And God, we thank you for the good, for the bad, for the happy, for the sad. God, we say thank you. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, we thank you. Oh, Jehovah Nisi, we thank you. Oh, Jehovah Rapha, we thank you. Jehovah the Great I Am, we thank you. God, if I had 10,000 tongues, I'd praise you with everyone, God. Because you've been better to me than I've been to myself. And for that, God, we give you total praise. We give you honor, we give you victory, Lord. All down through this year, God, you've been good, Jesus. And God, as we bless 2022 to come in, as we close out 2021, God, continue, God, to keep us safe as we're still in a pandemic. Keep us safe, God. And have your holy, holy way, Jesus. It's in your name, God, I pray. Amen.
that our hope, our joy, our strength, and our peace all come from Jesus. Amen? And we want to give him everything that we have. In our lives, we want him to be glorified. We want him to be
morning, if you could just say thank you to God right now, wherever you are. Just give him that praise, that worship that he deserves. It doesn't matter what you are doing, where you are right now, just take a moment to just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that you get the glory out of me, Lord Jesus. You get the glory from my life, God, in everything I do, God. It's about you and you alone, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We give him the glory. We give him the praise this uh, this evening. And I welcome all of you tonight to our New Year's Eve praise and celebration as we prepare our hearts to move into a brand new year. Amen. Can we give God a, a hand clap that we are now in the land of living, but just a few more hours. Amen. 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 And we thank God so much for his goodness. And I'm just going to be with you just long enough to bless you. Is that all right? All right. So I want you to do this with me just before we go into prayer. I want you to go ahead and whisper your prayer request uh, before the Lord. Put them in the air. And I want you to believe that God will hear and answer your prayers. Amen. As we approach the throne of God. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise tonight. We honor you tonight, O Lord. We worship and bless you tonight. We give you glory tonight. As we call on you now, Lord, as we have put our prayers before you, God, we pray you turn favorably toward each and every prayer tonight. Hear us this day, O Lord. Forgive us and cleanse us all of the inside. And Lord, I pray that you would bind and move against all wickedness and everything the enemy has purposed against us. We we counsel all of the assignments of the devil tonight. Lord, we bless you. We praise you. We magnify you, Lord, as you have put us now, Lord, in the right place of, of mind and spirit to praise you and to worship you and to glorify you as we approach a brand new year. And now, Lord, I pray that you will Send forth your ministering angels to help me to minister tonight. Bless us this day, O Lord. We pray even during the surge of the COVID virus, O Lord, that you would touch lives all over this world. That you would bless and keep and protect in the name of Jesus. Lord, look on those that are sick right now. And God calls them to recover. We praise you. We bless you. We thank you. As you move now, Lord, by your spirit, keep us in the center of your will. We thank you and we praise you tonight, Lord, for uh, everything you're going to do. We trust you tonight, O Lord. Now, Lord, we pray that you would make a way, have your way, as we declare the blessings of God to be upon the people of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening to you, and and may God be your strength in 2022. We're not quite there yet. I'm going to share a little bit of how things moved along this day. And my day started out um, early this morning at 6 a.m. prayer. And my God, did we have a wonderful, spirit-filled, dynamic, moving 6 a.m. prayer. It was beautiful. And before we go any further, I want to recognize one of our members uh, now stationed in Iraq. That's Omatola Ola Nayi. And I want to um, recognize her, but I also want to say a a, a special prayer. Uh, Just as I was sitting down earlier today um, thinking about her, they were actually moving into the new year. So it's already uh, the new year in Iraq. But can we just bow our heads for a word of prayer? Uh, for Omotola and all of the soldiers that are stationed abroad. Father, we praise you and we thank you today and we glorify you right now. And we pray that you will watch over not only Omotola, but for all of our soldiers 
that are stationed abroad, and especially now, Lord, uh, keep every one of them and keep their families, oh, Father, and let nothing trouble them. Let no sniper, sniper's bullets or any ambush of any kind come near any of them, but watch over them and, and protect them. Uh, Lord, we give you all of the praise and we give you all of the glory. Let your angels now, Lord, keep watch and protect. I pray and believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to just say uh, something about prayer this morning. Go back into that. What happened this morning, um, Omatola, uh, Captain Omatola, Captain Dr. Omatola, normally calls in and uh, she'll call me and I'll actually um, uh, add her to the call. But today she started out a little different. She started out with an exhortation. I want to share that with you from the Word of God, from Psalms 103. Um, and I'm going to read from the new, uh, from the King James Version, Psalms 103. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. This is Psalms 103. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far, so far hath he removed transgressions from us, our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of, a, of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. Grandchildren are included in that. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his, his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in his strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. So she exhorted us with that, that scripture. And um, I always like to listen um, and pray along with uh, Omatola as she's praying. And um, her prayers, I told her once, I said, your prayers are prophetic in, in, in how they, 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 uh, they say so much when she's praying, um, when, when, you, when, you, when you hear how God guides her in her prayers. She's truly an anointed vessel of God, and I just praise God for it. Um, and she prayed, um, she prayed right after me um, this morning, but uh, her prayers are prophetic. Uh, she exhorted us, of course, like I said, in Scripture. And um, lifting us up. So uh, as we continue to uh, think about her and all of the other soldiers that are stationed, just, just continue to, um, to pray for them. 
Uh, Omatola is a blessing to uh, this church, and I say that. Um, she was actually directed to come here by Pastor Flanagan, who is no longer uh, with us. He's grown on to be with the Lord, but Pastor Flanagan sent Omatola. He said, when you get to Gainesville, here's the church that I want you to, to go to. And the rest is history because God has blessed her and, of course, her husband, Demola, and the two sons. But the rest is history, how she has flowed and, and found herself involved all the way in uh, Iraq. First went to Kuwait and now she's in Iraq. But you, you can see the splendor and the wonder of what God does when he uses a vessel that wants to be used by God. How many of you want to be used by God? Amen. How many of you want to be used by God? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I know I do. And so we thank God so much for, and um, uh, like I said, it was just a, a blessing this morning to hear her in, in uh, exhortation as well as prayer. So uh, I bless the Lord for and um, thank God for everything that uh, he's doing. And one thing that she sent back to me this, this evening, right after 12, she said she was led of the Lord um, to go into the chapel to pray at, um, at midnight, their time. And she said when she went in, the chaplain came in and some other soldiers followed and she led the prayer um, over in Iraq tonight. So I praise God um, for the blessing and the anointing that's upon her life. Amen. Um, not just her, but for all the people of God that, that, that God uses. I really thank God for all of you and especially for that, um, that move of his spirit in the, uh, in the 6 a.m. prayer. I, do, I really praise God for that. Um, one of the things that Bishop Kimball has, has given us to us for the beginning of this year is looking forward. So I want to take you to a particular scripture in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, uh, the fourth chapter. You have your Bibles. And looking right at the 16th verse, verses 16 through 18. And it reads, for which cause, this is, New King, this is the King James, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For the light affliction, for those things that we are experiencing, um, trouble, confusion, problems, whatever, for a light affi affliction, um, but, for, but for a moment, Work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Now, what we say when we think about the eternal weight of glory, that's heaven. Amen. And for all that we are, are going through, and one scripture uh, version says, all that we are achieving by um, the light afflictions, because God is working, and day by day we are. Our, the outward man is decaying, but the inward man is being renewed day by day. Um, let's say it like this. The inward man is getting better day by day. That's that disposition that you have on the inside. Your connection with God, extremely important. And I'm not going to say I'm talking over anyone's head uh, at, at this time when I talk about how important it is to have the Lord on the inside. And just imagine, church, that every day we're feeding our spirit and we're getting better and we're, we're being renewed daily, every day, every day. That disposition, that inner man or the inner person on the inside, you are connecting every day. And it feels really good because um, if you can remember when you were not saved and you had no God, on your side, but now you have God living inside of you in every day, stronger, better, you're moving in the right direction. 
And the things that you're going through are causing you to achieve what God wants you to achieve. I mean, uh, as you die to those things, you're achieving, you're getting stronger. Um, it's almost like when you, and, and I have a point, I wanted to share this with you. Uh, when we talk about endurance, how uh, we um, put forth the, uh, the effort in, um, to keep going every day. Endurance is one's ability to look beyond the physical to the spiritual. So everything that you're going through, you know what the scripture says that um, without faith is impossible to please him. Everybody remember that scripture is it's impossible to please him. And, and faith is the, the substance of things that we, we hope for. We can't see it. Amen. We can't see it. It's the ev evidence of the things that we, we hope for. So endurance is one's ability to look beyond. That's that faith. To look beyond the physical to the spiritual. And you say, Reverend, do I have to be super spiritual to get in that, that, that frame of mind? It's, it's really where you are connecting you on the inside, all right, with, with him. That's the relationship. That's the building. And so you look beyond the physical, all that I'm going through. Woe is me. Amen. And that's what it really takes, church. Just for a moment, a light afflictions just for a moment and to look beyond that don't focus normally when we focus on our problems they begin to consume us they eat us up amen, amen. they drive us into depression worry anxiety so we don't want to focus on that or the situations or what you might say it's 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 just it's just so much keep your focus on him as he what continues to renew the spiritual on the inside, looking beyond that physical problem or whatever it may be to the spiritual. I also said it like this, pursuing God as a believer um, should be something that we constantly do. I'm going to go back to the scripture. But when we talk about pursuing God, it should be an active pursuit. Almost like when you get married, you pursue happiness. Amen. You don't pursue, oh, we're going to have a hard time. Well, guess what? Your life is going to be consumed by what? Everything that you keep saying. As a man thinketh, so is he. So when we talk about pursuit and pursuing God and, and the happiness, we're talking about not letting those physical things consume us, eat at us, nag at us, bother us. Somebody says something to you. They got on your last nerve. You know, and those things are not supposed to consume you. On the inside, the inner man is being strengthened. Say what you will, what you want. My relationship is intact with the Lord, and I'm going forward because I am what? No longer thinking about the, the physical, but the spiritual. So the scripture says, for a light affliction, which is but for a moment, church, just for a moment, it worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Heaven should always be our, our, our aim and our goal. All right. Heaven on our mind. All right. That's that ex exceeding weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen. That's why the, the, the word, of course, that the bishop said is looking, going forward. Don't look at the things which are which are not which are not which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. The eternal. We can't see it. Amen. That's the focus. For the things which are seen are temporal. They're temporal. It won't be like this always. They are temporal. And you have to somehow let that register in your, your mind, in your heart, in your spirit. Whatever bad things people are saying, just always the glory of the man, the Bible says, overlook a matter. It's not going to be like this always. You keep moving, you keep pressing, because more, the most important thing is your relationship with God, that inner man or the inner person that's being restored every day. It says the things which are seen, they are temporal, but the things which are not seen 
are eternal. Where we focus. Where we guide our minds. And, and the, the, the scriptures say uh, that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. And you have to bring sometimes that wondering mind back into subjection. And, and not allow the wondering mind to now take control of your thoughts. I thought about this. Um, and I think I've been here before where I live from paycheck to paycheck. And guess what? That's all I, I can think about if I can get, just get to the end of the month. I couldn't see beyond that because I was so conditioned paycheck to paycheck. I'm giving you a, a more a, a tangible example, but I had to get out of that. I had to believe that God was going to go beyond my prayers and he was going to bless me. He was going to fulfill and do a more or abundantly and above whatever I could actually think. I had to get out of that. I had to discipline my, my, my habits, which I had grown accustomed to. Oh my God, if I could just get to the end of the month and pay that, that utility bill. You know, just enough money. And I had to get out of that because I had to realize also that the things of God that he's trying to lead me to are eternal and spiritual. And so if I focus always on those light afflictions, then I won't ever see what God wants to what carry me to or take me to in my relationship with him. In other words, he's got all of those things under control. And we have a habit of worry and putting too much on ourselves and it's not like this shouldn't be like that but I believe if we work hard and we focus on him that God takes care of everything that concerns us working hard and focusing on him God takes care of everything you said come on please how does that relate to me I'm in school I'm in I'm, I'm trying to get through high school I'm trying to get through college focus on him focus on your studies Focus on all the things that will make you, what, uh, eligible for graduation. Try not to focus on the boys that may get your attention and pull you off or away from your books. That's, that's what I mean. You know, you, you have to keep that focus, even if it's, it, it, it means that I'm going to have to burn the candle at both ends. We used to uh, call them all-nighters. And we would, we, would, we would be up all night studying. And we need somebody in the room to make sure that we wouldn't sleep or fall asleep. So there was a group of us, but there was always someone that couldn't last all night and they would fall asleep. But we had to pursue it because it was more important for us to achieve that, the graduation or completion. And that's the same thing, church. That's the same thing. We work hard. As we, if, you, if, you, if you're focusing on, I'm not going to pass this chemistry. I'm, I'm not going to get past this physics. I'm, I'm going to probably flunk this algebra or whatever. You, you're focusing on that, then more than likely that's where you're going you're, you're, you're gonna to be, you're, you'll fall to it. But if you can just believe and, and understand that if I put the work and the time in, I'll be all right. I'll do all right. I'll achieve. All right. I'll make, I'll make better for myself. If you can say it like that, I'll make better for myself. Um, but so that's just for a, a, just for a moment. In Hebrews, take the, I want to take you to Hebrews 12. And I'll tell you why it's so important um, for us to continue pursuing what God wants us to do. In Hebrews 12, I'm going to read a few verses. Starting with verse 1, it says, Wherefore seen we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience uh, the race which is set before us. Let us lay aside every weight. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. That's why I said we're pursuing that happiness. For the joy that is set before for the Lord Jesus, he pursued the cross. He knew the, um, the let's say, the intended goal. 
and, 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 and what he was aiming for and working for. So that's where it's focused. That's why he was able to maintain that joy that was brought before him and move into that, 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 that realm, if you might say, the spiritual, because he knew that we were weighed in the balance. It was for him the joy to endure the cross. Praise God. Despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And that's what I thought about when I said the pursuit of happiness. For those things that you want to achieve in life. Looking forward the things that you want to accomplish in life. Looking forward. If you keep looking at all the things you just keep fumbling over and messing up, you won't get anywhere. You've got to trust him. You got to put all your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ because we know that he wants the best for each and every one of us. So how many of you tonight can agree to look forward? Amen. Looking forward. Looking forward. Stop looking at the present or the, 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 the things that you're going through right now. I believe sometimes you, when you look at those things, it, it, like I said, it throws you off. But begin to start seeing Everything I'm going through is for a reason. I'm just going to, in adversity, I'll make my score. I'll get stronger. No matter what comes up, I'm not stopping. Amen. I'm going to accomplish. And that's why we have dreams and visions. All right. They are for a reason. And if you lose your vision uh, or you lose that focus, um, you're going to miss out on the things that God wants you to, to, uh, to have. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So looking forward, praise the Lord. There's a whole lot more to that, but in, in, uh, uh, in, in given time right now, we're, we're going to move a little further into our, our, our um, communion service, not a communion service, our uh, candlelight service. Is there a song of praise at this time? I'm looking at a... No? God be the glory. Amen. Looking forward. And I pray that all of you are looking forward. Brand new year. Those are at home right now. Um, I'm going to light this candle up front. And um, what I'd like for all of you to do is stand. You know, normally we all come and the families gather. But tonight we're not going to. I'm going to light the one candle. And what we traditionally have done is when the candle is lit, we cover our families. We go to God in prayer and we cover our families as we approach the new year. So if you're near a family member, of the new year. We want to be a light as well, Father. We pray now, Lord, for all the prayer requests for families that have come up before you. We cover every one of them in the name of Jesus. We pray that you will touch every request in the name of Jesus. 
And for those that are watching virtually, oh Father, we cover the families tonight. We cover those loved ones. We cover loved ones that may be stationed abroad like Omatola. We cover them now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. And we praise you. Move mightily, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. We are looking forward. Move mightily. Move mightily, Lord, in our lives. So we will not get hung up on those things that are temporal or temporary. That you would bless the head of every household in the name of Jesus. That you would bless every inhabitant of those households in the name of Jesus. That you would shelter and protect. You are the Lord, our God. Heal it all of our diseases. And I pray your hands of protection to keep us from COVID, the virus. We exercise all wisdom, all knowledge, all the understanding that has come forward. Father, we give you glory and we give you praise. We bless you in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to stop praying, but let you all continue praying for your loved ones, your family right now. this year, seeing us through this year um, with all the ups and downs, um, losing friends and loved ones. And uh, my prayer is that God bless us. He go before us in 2020 and uh, he give us a fresh vision for our life and everything that we set in our minds that we are able to accomplish. Uh, the Bible says that we are sufficient in Christ Jesus. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves, but we are sufficient in him. Um, as we go before the throne, you can Send up your prayer requests, even as I pray for the body of Christ. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you because you have given us another opportunity, Lord, to be in the land of the living, God. We don't take it for granted, Lord, but we say thank you, Lord, because you have given us grace and mercy, Lord, for 365 days of the year, Father God. 
uh, even throughout the pandemic, throughout layoffs and the uncertainty we have faced this year, God, you have shielded and protected protected us, Father God, and given, given us another opportunity, Lord, to be in the land of the living, Father God. And as we prepare our hearts and our minds to go into the new year, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to give us a fresh vision, Father God, for our lives, Father God. We ask you, Lord, to give us new goals and new uh, endeavors, Lord, new things, Lord, to keep us inspired for life and about life, no matter what it looked like. Father God, in your word, Lord, you made ways in the desert, Father God. You you gave food in the desert, Lord. You, you were fire in the desert, Lord. You are a cloud, Lord, in the desert, Lord. You give them, you gave the children of Israel water, Lord, in the desert, Lord. So we ask you, Lord, as humanity, as we go through this dry spell in our lifetime, Lord, as we go through the desert, Father God, we ask you to be our refuge, Lord, and continue to be our God, Lord, and give us hope, Father God, for 2022, Father God. We ask, Lord, to, to bless our loved ones, Lord. We lift our loved ones up to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you're sovereign. Father God, we ask you, Lord, to shield and protect all of our loved ones, Father God, all of our friends, Father God. We pray for our, our extended family and our immediate family, Lord, our abide in faith family, Father God. We just ask you, God, Father God, to save our loved ones, save our friends, save, save our family members, Father God. And last but not least, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to fill us with your Holy Spirit, Father God, to fill us with your word, Lord, to fill us with your light. Father God, you said in your word, if we hunger and we thirst after righteousness, you said we will be filled, Father God. So we ask in 2022 that we hunger and thirst after righteousness so we can be filled, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. That concludes our service for tonight. And um, we also want to encourage you on the um, doors as you exit. You can drop your gifts, your offerings inside. We also encourage all of you, um, no hugging, all right? You can do the fist bump, the elbow bump, all right? Uh, exercise all precautions, amen? God bless you. And we know it's a little while away, but happy new year to all of you. <laughs>